Hello everyone and thank you much for watching, this is me Mr. P and this is another episode of the Proxmox Tutorials. In this video we'll show you how we can set up the iSCSI drive inside your virtualized TrueNAS virtual machine and how you can link that iSCSI drive to let's say a Raspberry Pi running Diapi OS and that will make that the Diapi OS files will be stored on your TrueNAS virtual machine with the snapshots and the backups and if something happens to Raspberry Pi to the Diet Pi OS installation on your Raspberry Pi you have all the data files still stored inside your TrueNAS safely backed up and easy to restore. A couple of things I want to mention before carry on into this video. Yes all this is going to be done for Raspberry Pi but I will use the Raspberry Pi Diet Pi OS virtual machine just easier for me to record this easier for me to post edit after that it's just I'm lazy I, I just can't be bothered connecting disconnecting this Raspberry Pi from the capture card and then doing all the sync post processing editing so basically the Raspberry Pi Diet Pi OS ID number 800 will represent this Raspberry Pi. So everything what I will do in this VM with the Diet Pi OS can be easily done with any version of a Diet Pi OS. So first thing what we need to do, obviously I'm going to start this virtual machine technically the same way as you will, for, exa for example, plug in this into a power running Diet Pi OS and get everything set up first. So my virtual machine of a Raspberry Pi running Diet Pi OS is booted again this id number of 800 virtual machine represents any raspberry pi computer running diet pi os any computer that is running diet pi os just to again mention that everything what i will do in this virtual machine can be easily replicated on any device that is running diet pi os so virtual machine is running so i need to get this uh, prepared to use iSCSI. first thing what ip address i do i did receive okay so it's 192.168.178.69 nice remotely connected to that virtual machine to that Raspberry Pi. Let's pretend this is Raspberry Pi and it's already here. The first thing I need to do is just quickly update and upgrade all the packages just to make sure that this Raspberry Pi is up to date and it has all the packages installed. While this is doing that, uh, what we're going to use is a package called Open iSCSI. iSCSI is Internet Small Computer, actually what it's called, Internet I'm just gonna double check. Let's yeah, internet small computer system interface. In a quick TLDR, it's a protocol, it's a way to connect storage to the computer, and that storage can be anywhere in the world. So uh this is running my Raspberry Pi, let's pretend Raspberry Pi is up to date. So we need to install op open SCSI. To do that, we need to type apt install open dash iSCSI. Enter. And that will take no time to install, it's just a couple of megabytes, uh, it's actually 2.1 megabyte in size. Press Y and enter, and open SCSI is installed. So right now this Raspberry Pi, this virtual machine is ready to accept connection to the target of iSCSI. And I'll ex explain to you how everything is works. Hi everyone, Mr. P from the future here. A little adjustment to this part of the video. We need to change the iSCSI config file to initiate iSCSI agent to rediscover and reconnect all the iSCSI drives every time your machine with the Diapi OS will restart. To do that, you need to type inside a terminal while you're logged into the Raspberry Pi nano space etc iscsi iscsi d dot config press enter and if you scroll down a bit you'll find the line which is going to say node dot starter equals manual you need to put the hashtag in front of it to comment that in and a couple of lines above it's going to say node dot startup equal automatic you need to delete the hashtag to comment that out Control X to close, Y to save, enter to confirm. And right now, every time you restart this machine which runs Diet Pi OS, the iSCSI will automatically rediscover and automatically will reconnect all the targets that will, you will connect to this machine. Let's right now connect to TrueNAS. I can see the tag number is 24, so my TrueNAS IP in address should end with 24. Press enter on that and log in to my TrueNAS, which is running inside the Proxmox. I'm just going to open Proxmox as well. So TrueNAS is connected. Everything's great. All of my two terabyte drives ticking nicely. So next step is we need to prepare ourselves the iSCSI drive inside this TrueNAS. If on the left hand side, if I click on storages and if I drill down all the way to the all the subfolders, this is how it's set up. As you can see, it says file systems and I have data inside data. I have data set Proxmox. Inside that I have PVE backups, PVE drives, etc. What I want to do is under Proxmox, actually under data, I'm going to mouse over over data, I'll click on the three dots 
And instead of creating data set, uh, yeah, actually let's create a data set. Let's call this Raspberry Pi. I'm doing that because maybe in the future we'll have more than one Raspberry Pi that will require the iSCSI. So I'm creating data set for that. So let's wait for data set to get created. And like I showed you in the previous videos, we need to get ACL sorted. So I'm going to change group from root to DEX. And why is DEX? I explained to you while I was giving you a demo how to set up TrueNAS. So apply to a group DEX. Great. Let's apply that. So right now it's doing the uh, ACL up updates. So right now under data, I have a data set called Proxmox and a data set called Raspberry Pi. A mouse over Raspberry Pi, click on the three dots and choose Z volume. And this is the iSCSI volume we need to set up. So name will be, let's say, for example, this is a Kodi uh, case for Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to call it Kodi. And then there is a, this field, which is called size for this Z volume. With the data sets, when you're creating a data set, it will take the storage of all available space. With the Z, vol, Z volumes or iSCSI drives, you need to pre-select how much storage you're allowing this to have. So you need to think ahead, okay, this Raspberry Pi will use maybe 256, 256 gigabytes, maybe 512 gigabytes, maybe a terabyte of storage. So for this demo, uh, the SD card that is inside this Raspberry Pi is 32 gigabytes. But let's say I want to triple, quadruple that. Let's say I'm going to give 256 G. So 250 gigabytes iSCSI drive will be used for this Raspberry Pi. So I gave a name. I gave a <clears throat> amount of storage, scroll down and click save. And that's it. And right now, if I expand the data sets right now under Raspberry Pi, as you can see, it says volume. They all file systems and this is says volume and it's already pre-selected amount of storage this drive allows to have. So this is done. Next thing, what we need to do on the left hand side, we need to go and click on the shares. And inside here, we have a Windows Samba, we have Unix, we have web dev and we have block iSCSI share target. We click on the configure and now there is a base name. I suggest this to be changed to something very easy for you to understand because you will have to punch that in something simple. So I'm going to call this iSCSI Dex. Here we go. So iSCSI Dex and I click save. So right now the target. OK, I it's asking me to enable the service because it's first time I'm doing this. So yeah, I enable the service. That means that if I go back to shares, this is right now, as you can see, it says running and the others are stopped. So back to configure and name is changed. That's great. Now I will click on the wizard, click on a wizard, give a name. So I'm going to call this Cody. It's going to be device. I'm sharing via iSCSI protocol. I'm sharing the device. Click on the drop down and I choose tank slash data slash Raspberry Pi slash Cody. And this is the Z volume of virtual physical kind of hard drive. That's what I'm sharing with this uh, block. Under sharing platform, I will choose modern OS and click next. Next, under portal, I'll click a drop down and you will see nothing here like I do. Click new. And right now, uh, right now, yeah, leave like this and click next. Under initiator, I'm going to leave everything as it is. And this one, I'm click save. Actually, hold on. Oh, yeah, I saw it. Under portal, you need to click add and IP address. I'm going to do 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 and 3260 is the default port. This means that any IP address is accepted to connect to the Z volume. If you know already Raspberry Pi, like in my case, this virtualized Raspberry Pi IP address is ending with 69. So I would create in here a uh, IP address ending with 69. That means that only this Raspberry Pi can connect to this target. I'm just going to do 0, 0, 0 to say everyone can access within my home network. And now I can click save. That's it. That's done. Click save again on here just to make sure. And right now back on the left hand side under shares, I should see block iSCSI has a code inside here. That means that is being shared across my home network. Go back to Termux. And right now I do have iSCSI installed or open iSCSI installed in this let's pretend Raspberry Pi, which I'm virtualizing because it's much easier for me to post edit. But let's say this is the one that we SSH'd into. So let's clear the screen and let's write iSCSI ADM dash M stands for mode and the mode we're going to use. You can write dash M or you can write like this. I'm just going to put dash M called I want to run iSCSI admin in the mode called discovery and I want to discover target which is static dash P that means on a IP address 178 and what's my true NAS IP address is 24. So you enter your IP address of a true NAS and press enter. As you can see, it's detected that inside there, 
there is a iSCSI DEX colon Cody. So this name iSCSI DEX colon Cody, this is the one we changed the name to. So imagine, oh, what is it on the shares? So imagine in the future, if you haven't changed that, you will have to punch all the in in, in the next step. But right now, ours is very easy, which is iSCSI DEX colon Cody. And now the fun part is we need to make that Raspberry Pi, this Raspberry Pi OS connect to this iSCSI. Yes, we discovered it does exist. So right now we need to go and start adding that in. To do that, I need to type iSCSI, iSCSI ADM dash M node that means that i'm acting as a node which will connect to the target and the target is a shared z volume inside my virtualized true nas my virtual machine we put the target name so we put target name and this is where you need to enter this target ip target name dex iscuzzy colon cody so this is where i entering this name if i haven't changed the name in here under the shares and then choosing iscuzzy and configure all this thing that was in previously in here, I would have to remember and I would have to enter every time that I want to connect to this um, Z volume target. So we have a target name. Next, we're going to do portal. That means that we're giving um, IP address where actually to connect. And then again, in the, in the quotes, we put IP address of the true NAS. In my case, is ending with 24. So true NAS ending with 24. I enter that in dash dash login. If I do that, uh, why you don't want to find this? The problem was I had the iSCSI DEX in the wrong way around. I had DEX iSCSI, but it's actually a, a, a little hint above iSCSI DEX. So that's the one I need to enter. So quick rundown. I'm running iSCSI IAADM command with the mode of node. I'm giving hard target name of iSCSI DEX colon Cody. This is the same one as inside here, as you can see, iSCSI DEX followed by colon Cody and the Cody is means what I am sharing inside the here. So this is a name I'm picking from. Then a portal is IP address. The port number, you can enter the port number. You don't need to enter the port number. Uh, it's going to pick port number by default, which is 3260 and then login and press enter. So as you can see, a bunch of stuff showed up and the login to interface to successful. And now if I'm going to run DF, I will should see a drive here, LSBLK. So here we go. SDB is 256 gigabytes. It's like a physically I attached the hard drive of 256 gigabytes to this Raspberry Pi. This is how it showed up. And now next thing is we need to format this virtual Z volume drive. To do that inside Diapi OS, you need to type Diapi dash drive underscore manager and press enter. And this is a drive that we connected. As you can see, there is no file system and the format is required. I'll press enter on that. I'll say, yeah, format that. Yes, format that. It gives me a bunch of information that is about to delete everything and partition, delete all the partition, everything will be formatted. I'm gonna say okay and press enter. And right now, Diapi OS formatting this virtual drive that is host inside TrueNAS. But as far as the Diapi OS thinks about this drive, is like a physical drive I just plugged in. Instead of mounting into this weird location, I'm gonna delete all that and I'm gonna put the name called iSCSI. So, okay on that. Okay on that. Back exit and okay and now if i will put df i should see a message showing up at the bottom as you can see it says mount at scuzzy and it's 256 gigabytes of this virtual drive that is being hosted inside the true nas now that means that i have for example let's say this 32 gigabyte micro sd card inside this raspberry pi and i have virtually attached 256 gigabytes of a drive diapi OS, our diapi os allows you to move the diapi user data from one storage to external storage. And in my case, external storage is the SCSI. To do that, I'm gonna write the command diapi, again, diapi dash drive manager, select the drive, which is says here, ETE XT4, capacity 250-ish, about 251 gigabytes. Enter on that and scroll down a bit or go down a bit until you find user data. I'm gonna enter on that and it says, your user data will be moved from internal micro SD card to this mounted drive. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm fat. I'm happy with that. And that's it. So right now 
Yes, all the DiapiOS dry files that requires to run DiapiOS is still located on microSD card, but all the user files, all the setups that I will do with the dock and etc. and etc., they're all right now stored inside this virtual 256 gigabyte drive that is hosted inside the TrueNAS. So right now the, everything is stored inside TrueNAS, and I, next thing I will go back to a TrueNAS con, a TrueNAS dashboard and the data protection. I'll click on that, and it says peri periodic snapshot task. I will click add and what kind of data set I want to take a snapshot of. I'm going to say tank slash data. That means that basically everything that is below this will be taken a snapshot. And what the beauty of the TrueNAS snapshot is not like a backup uh, where, for example, you have a gigabyte file and you back that up, is backs up the gigabyte again. So you end up with two gigabytes of storage being taken by taking one backup. If you want to have increment backups, let's say you want to keep daily backup of for seven days. So one gigabyte of your storage will end up being extra of the seven gigabytes of storage because it's going to back up seven times. With the TrueNAS snapshot, the snapshot will take the difference between the changes from the previous snapshot. So if you have one gigabyte of a uh, file and you snapshot that, it will create a small file snapshot file that will say, okay, all the Z ones and zeros, this is the location, how these all ones and zeros are done. And if that's one gigabyte file changes, it only will snapshot the changes. It will not start creating the massive files as a backup would do. So this is why I'm going to go inside a data protection under periodic snapshots. I'm going to say I want to backup everything below the data. I want to keep for two weeks. That's fine. And naming scheme, I will leave as auto. And under schedule, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to say custom. And what I want in here is basically like this. I'm going to say asterisk on here. So that means that, well, as you can see here, system time zone um, in Los Angeles, and we'll change that in a minute. But this is takes a snapshot hourly of the data set. I'm going to click on that. And it says it's going to start at the midnight and it will finish one minute before midnight. I'm going to say save that. And because I haven't changed the time zone, I'm just going to do quickly that. I'm going to go under system settings, then general. Scroll down until localization, click settings. And under the time zone, I'll click on that. Actually, can I start typing in here? Yes, I can. So I'm going to say Europe slash London and click save. So time zone is changed to correct way. So back to a data protection, as you can see right now, it's going to run hourly on exactly one hour or exactly zero minutes past each hour. It's going to run a snapshot. And this is right now is going to do one in 23 minutes. And that is fine, all running great. So that means that every hour, this data set with everything below, with all the Proxmox stuff, with all the P drives, with all the Raspberry stuff, even the Raspberry Pi Z volume code, it will be snapshotted every hour. Let's go back to the Raspberry Pi, or virtualized Raspberry Pi. And in here, if I go into Mount iSCSI, inside here I have a folder which is lost and found. We can actually delete that. So inside here, I have a data user, Diapi user data, and this is the location of all the files for user Diapi. And inside this folder for user Diapi, let's say, for example, I have music pictures, videos, Docker data, because I have a data, uh, Docker installed, then loads. let's say I will create another folder, important stuff, and another folder, let's say subscribe, and another folder, please click like. So let's say I have all these things right, stored inside this virtual drive. Tomorrow, for example, let's say tomorrow, the SD card of this Raspberry Pi running Diapi OS dies tomorrow. And all the updates, all the programs that are installed and it's running, yes, they will disappear with this micro SD card. But all the folders, all the files, all the stuff I, I, has, I have set up and then loaded, they're going to stay here. And the beauty of this, that the true NAS will take a snapshot every hour of the Z volume code. And if the micro SD card will die tomorrow, I can swap micro SD card with another micro SD card running Diapi OS, and I can relink this Z volume back to the new micro SD card, new Diapi OS installation, and I will have all my files backed up. There is a downside of using the iSCSI. With the iSCSI is that only one device is allowed to connect to a SCSI, iSCSI Z volume. You can have two Raspberry Pis connected to one single iSCSI drive. Where with the Samba shares you can. But with the Samba share, yes, I can create a data set calling Kodi backups and I can go inside here 
and mount a Samba share to this Diap iOS and try move the user files. But the problem is if I'm going to try to move the user files like I did here, user data, I can't move the user data files to a Samba, mounted Samba share. Where iSCSI, like I said to this Diap iOS installation, iSCSI drive, as far as this Diap iOS installation thinks, is just a physical drive connected to the USB port. With the snapshots right now, let's go, uh, I'm inside the storage and I will go on the Kodi, click on the three dots and I'll click create a snapshot, which is gonna do a manual snapshot. Snapshot is done. I'll go at the top, it says snapshots, click on that and choose snapshots. As you can see right now, it's created the manual snapshot and great, right now I have a backup to go, to go back to this point in time. Let's say for example, I will go and right now backup's done. Go back, go back, go back. Let's say my, I deleted a folder. Let's call it, I deleted the subscribe folder. I deleted the, um, let's say stuff folder and I deleted important stuff folder. A bunch of stuff I deleted by accident and delete this. Uh, remove dash R, please click like. Here we go. I lost these all files and folders. Beauty right now with the true NAS, I can actually restore all that. How to get all this, for example, file retrieve from here. So I'm gonna click on this and it's gonna say clone to a new data set. I want, let's say for example, this one clone to a new data set. So it's gonna clone to this new data set where it says manual. I'm gonna just delete all that and I'm gonna say Kodi, Kodi 2. Click save. So that's saved, okay. Under shares, I'm going to click on that. Under blocks, I'm going to click configure, click wizard. And this one, I'm going to say Kodi backup. Okay, if I can type correctly, backup. Come on. Okay, now I typed correctly. Under device, click, uh, I will leave a device and I will choose that I want to restore actual Kodi dash two. Sharing is modern. Next portal, it should already give me the IP address or a whitelisted IP address list from a previous setup. I'm gonna click next on that, click next on that, and click save. So right now I have restored the iSCSI volume with the files that I deleted. And let's say if I go here, as you can see, the files are inside mount iSCSI and I don't have nothing here uh, because I deleted just before taking a snapshot. Oh, I deleted the files I created previously. So right now, let's go and do this thing. I suppose AMD dash M discover dash M discover. And then is I want target static with the IP address of this one, 24. So now I have two iSCSI drives. One is Kodi, one is Kodi backup. Kodi is already been used. So I have Kodi backup. Let's right now mount that in. So I'm going to do iSCSI, iSCSI, come on, can't even type uh, AMD dash m node target name and this is going to be iSCSI dex Kodi dash backup and then I need to go and do portal IP address of the true NAS and then log in that's successfully connected great I can right now run diapi drive I have this drive but as you can see right now it doesn't tell me that I need to reformat it because this is a copy of the drive that we used before I just need to mount that somewhere so I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna say I want to mount this as a Kodi dash backup great I mounted that in so now if I navigate to mount I should see uh, one is called Kodi backup and one is called SCSI SCSI is the main one and Kodi backup that's the backup we have and if I navigate to Kodi backup I have my diapi user data files Inside here, I have my please click like, stuff, subscribe, and etc. folders that I created. But for example, I just backed and deleted, so restored that back to as it was. That's great. Let's say I restored the files. I go back to the IPI user drives, and actually, I need to exit this folder. So you need to exit the folder of uh, from the drive that you're trying to mount. Other otherwise, it's going to give you an error. So go back in the drives. So call the backup. I'm going to say unmount that. So drive is unmounted. So it's like I I physically unplugged the hard drive from my Raspberry Pi and now I need to type iSCSI uh, AMD dash M node target name because I need to disconnect this iSCSI drive from my Raspberry Pi. And what all this command does is basically the login command but in reverse. So we have the uh, running iSCSI admin with the mode node target name is iSCSI index this colon Kodi backup. 
this is the one that we're sharing here if i click on here so code dash backup and portal we're using portal ip address of a true nas and i'm going to say log out that's it drive has been disconnected that has been i snapshot i restored from a snapshot the drive mounted into my diap ios restored the files that i lost that i deleted by accident deleted stuff i got that sorted and i disconnected the drive i go back here and under code backups i'm just gonna say i don't want that to be shared anymore yes i'm happy with that so that's been removed and under storage if i'll go to the data raspberry pi this says code dash two i'm gonna click three dots i'm gonna say delete z volume and i need to give the name code dash two say confirm and click delete and that's it that's it i Restore the files that I have deleted by accident from a snapshot that I created just before before basically running this test. So as a quick recap, if just all this video a bit confusing you, the idea for this video is, or the idea for me to shoot this video is to demonstrate that you have a Raspberry Pi with a micro SD card with 8, 32 gigabytes, 64 gigabyte, doesn't matter, but you have micro SD card and you have Diap iOS running on this micro SD card on the Raspberry Pi or on the laptop. Diapi actually runs on quite a lot of devices. You can run on all computer and even on my on the Mac Mini 2012 version. Diapi OS runs quite happily on that device. But anyway, you have micro SD card with the Diapi OS and you set up a lot of stuff on there. You have a bunch of Docker containers running and they're doing all sorts of things. You have a database, you have next cloud, you have file browser, you have uh, torrent uh, torrent client you have transmission etc etc you have all this but micro sd card will die eventually so we're using the port we're using proxmox and we're using true nas virtual machine which is virtualized inside that proxmox to create the z volume in a tldr z volume is ice because drive is an internet small computer connection something something protocol i already forgot what that means but basically we created a virtual drive of 256 gigabytes and we mounted that to the raspberry pi and we used diapi os built-in feature which is called move user data to different location to do that like again is using this command i go inside here it says user data and i say that this drive this is where user data needs to be located and right now the micro sd card die tomorrow doesn't matter i have everything backed up using a true nas snapshots and is backed up using the z volume which is hosted inside true nas um true nas virtual machine i hope all this makes sense uh, once i discovered this and set this up it's just was super amazing that means that i can have a bunch of raspberry pis running all sorts of stuff around my house from uh, octoprint to motion eye cctv and etc but i know that all the diapi user data files will be safely stored inside one z volume inside one ice as drive that in case if the raspberry pi micro sd card dies well it dies i don't really like i don't have funds to start buying terabytes and terabytes of nvme drives for all my raspberry pis so why not just to have all these uh, files stored inside one central location and micro sd card is used just as like as a boot drive just to make diapi os functioning on the raspberry pi where all the important stuff are stored inside the z volume inside true nas and true nas does the hourly snapshots just in case if i'm stupid and i delete the file that i was not supposed to delete anyway thank you much for watching i hope this video makes sense in uh, upcoming videos we're going to do another stuff another amazing thing with the proxmox raspberry pi and samsung decks thank you much for watching and i'll see you in the next one Goodbye.